Hey everybody, it's Mike here, Mike's Weather Page. What's going on? It is the unofficial first day of hurricane season, May the 15th. I'll tell you why here in a second. Um, we're entering a new season. I hope you stay tuned right here to our page. Really appreciate it. We uh, we stream live a lot, uh, pretty much Monday through Friday at 919 Eastern. You can catch the Daily Brew. We go over everything from puppies to football to baseball to race cars to whatever else, plus a lot of weather. Uh, that's every day, 919 Eastern. Um, we do live events at uh, at night when there's a, a name system. We also do live videos on the weekend if there's a name system. Uh, these little videos here are going to be short and sweet. We call them uh, 5 o'clock somewhere videos. You can always count on them later in the day, usually around 5 o'clock. Um, and it's pretty much an overview of what's went on throughout the day. We have fresh models that come out around noon time, one o'clock, two o'clock. So I kind of recap everything, make it short and sweet. People like it. It's re really good last year. Um, it'll be more concise to the point. Boom, boom, boom. And uh, you can view those everywhere. I'll have them posted. Uh, we also go uh, uh, live sometimes on TikTok and Instagram and, and definitely post on TikTok and Instagram there too. So five social media platforms you can catch uh, Mike's Weather page. So why do I say May 15th? Well, here you go. Right here. Boom. Check this out. We see these models all the time. These are maps. These are the NAC Outlook maps. They start running on the 15th of May. The official hurricane season is June 1st. These start running now. These come out every day, 2 o'clock, 8 o'clock, uh, 2 a.m., um, uh, 8 a.m., 2 p.m., 8 p.m. That's when you get the crayons. We always joke about crayons, right? This is when you start getting like highlighted alerts here that are circled areas. New for this year, though, kind of excited for me. Um, we're going to have these things going seven days out. They used to only go out five days. Now when the NHC sees an area of concern that we could have something brewing, it's actually going to point it out seven days instead of five days. So we're going to be able to track systems a little bit longer. Uh, new for this year. We'll see how that works out. It'll be interesting for sure. Uh, but as far as the season goes, it starts June the 1st. This came out last week. This was a statement from the National Hurricane Center. Uh, they did assess a system that we were tracking back in January. Uh, they went ahead and designated it a tropical system. They didn't give it the name Arlene, so our first system of the year will be Arlene. But they did say we already had a system this this year. They didn't name it. It's still um, going to be AL01. The next system is going to be AL02, Atlantic season number two, given the name Arlene if we get a system. Here's a little recap, by the way. This is kind of what our show looks like, um, but you can see that uh, right, um, we were tracking this system here's back. What we got. January 16th. Interesting, right? So this is a tightly cordial low pressure system spinning so, off the north northeast here. This is North Carolina. This is going away. It isn't going to so we were watching it. I was, you know, this is what I do. You di dissect things. We look at models. We look at maps. Look at wind data. Uh, you know, we were looking at wind maps. So, uh, you know, we were kind of wondering what the heck back then, January. So anyway, we did have a system this season. Official forecast came out a couple weeks ago. This is from uh, Colorado State University. And everybody always says, Colorado, what's up with Colorado? Well, that's where all the big smart guys are at. Just because they're in Colorado, they're still the big meteorologists of the world. Uh, what are they expecting? Well, they're expecting almost a near normal season as of now. This was posted back in April. They're going to do a new outlook June the 1st. Um, but near normal numbers, uh, and I'll tell you why, basically two reasons. They're expecting El Nino, pretty, pretty high confidence we're going to be in an El Nino, which limits hurricanes usually. Number wise, not intensity wise, just the number of hurricanes. Um, but then we have a really warm water, so they're kind of considering the El Nino is going to reduce the number, warm water is going to raise the number. Uh, so that's where we're at. I wanted to point out something in this presentation that I do. Uh, they, uh, over Eric Burris in Orlando has a, a good track record last year. He, uh, their 2022 forecast highlighted pretty much everything that we had, Ian and Nicole, based on a, a model called the LRC, it's a re recurring cycle model. I, I've been finding a lot of good information with that. I've been reading a lot about it. Just just to point out what they predicted uh, for this season coming up, 2023, kind of highlighting a little bit of shift over um, more towards you know the Florida Panhandle and West Coast. So we'll see if that pans out. That's just one forecast of many. Uh, El Nino, this is what um, we're talking about with El Nino. El Nino is, is an area in the Pacific that gets warmer. The warmer anomalies create a lot of wind shear. And the Atlantic, when you have a lot of wind shear in the Atlantic, you have fewer hurricanes in the Atlantic, um, and, and a lot, primarily down in the Caribbean. So that's why they say less storms with an El Nino year. Um, we'll see if that pans out or not. 
Water temperatures, uh, offsetting that, we have extremely warm water temperatures right now. This is across the whole main development region. And you can just see everything's two to three to four degrees above normal based on a 30 year average. Uh, the Gulf of Mexico has been running pretty warm. So, you know, a lot of, a lot of uh, unknowns, the warm water, if that's gonna be able to offset the El Nino effects um, and, and have some pop-up storms that are, you know, maybe intense. Uh, this is a depth of an ocean heat content map currently dated on 515. Just kind of showing you the brighter colors is how far uh, down the warm water goes. And the farther down the warm water goes, that's fuel for storms. And it's already starting to warm up below the surface. Um, cool, cool water below the surface is called upwelling. It helps slow down tropical storm strength and intensity. Warmer water below the surface helps. So uh, helps intensity. And, and that's what we're looking at right now. Oh, this is 2018. Let's talk about 18. So 2018 was an El Nino year. Um, and pretty much everything we just talked about with an El Nino played out. We had almost uh, zero activity across the Caribbean. We had two systems here, if you note, uh, in the Atlantic here. Red means hurricanes. They pretty much uh, died off to tropical storms right, right there as it started entering this high shear that's expected. So great example, 2018, showing you that Caribbean area with a lot of wind shear, almost no activity. The two systems that we did have almost, you know, got weakened pretty significantly as it neared the islands. So hopefully that pans out, at least for the Caribbean. The only thing about 2018, as you might know, uh, we had two systems. We had homegrown Michael, unfortunately, uh, didn't care about that wind shear. It was a homegrown system. In the Gulf of Mexico, we know about Michael. The other system was Florence that went around this wind sheared area and it impacted the East Coast. A couple years that I want to bring up real quick. You know, Michael began as a strong El Nino year. Dorian was a strong El Nino year. 2004 was an El Nino year with um, Jean and Francis, and they all four systems went around this high shear zone. So, what does that mean? A couple things. Gulf of Mexico is hot. Always got to worry about rapid intensification. 10 landfalling continental U.S. hurricanes have been 150 mile an hour plus. Nine of those were tropical storms three days out. So rapid intensification is real. The warmer that water is, quicker storms can develop. So we're definitely watching here. And we're watching here. So, you know, we'll see if history repeats itself. We have a lot of people watching the Caribbean. Hopefully El Nino plays out. We have a lot of... Um, slow activity down there but i'm i'm a little curious on this pattern that i've seen with past El Nino years if we're going to see systems work themselves around the bahamas and western atlantic and find a way into the continental u.s and then of course the gulf we always worry about the gulf when the waters are hot uh today is like i said may 15th ironically the Nash hurricane center today designated our first atlantic wave um kind of early you know, coming off of Africa, there's a lot of convection in Africa. They look at this kind of stuff to give a, a preview to the future. Uh, very rare to get a system come across to affect us this early in the season. There's a lot of wind shear, a lot of dust in the Atlantic. You're going to hear a lot about Saharan air layer. That's very common the first couple months of season. So we're not looking over here yet. Uh, but it's interesting that we already got a tropical wave officially marked by the Hurricane Center today. Hi, right, going back to our buddy Eric Burris here. Um, <clears throat> he pointed this out the other day on his Twitter I've talked a lot about this. We've had a system before June 1st in 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. That's a lot of years. We didn't have anything in 22. So it is common to get a system in May. Doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a very busy season. It just means that old fronts, usually tails of fronts. They're not tropical waves usually. They're usually tails of fronts. Low pressure areas get going. Usually they're tropical storms. Very rare to get a hurricane in, in May. Mostly tropical storms, subtropical storms. They usually, you know, move off to the northeast. Sometimes they don't even hit land. So it uh, could be wet, though. We've seen what Fort Lauderdale, Lauderdale had a couple weeks ago. Um, so with that warmth, you know, the Gulf's 82, 3, 4, 5 degrees already. Um, you know, don't ever just say only a tropical storm. We could still have flooding, and those sometimes are bigger headaches and, than wind. But May systems are, are common and uh, nothing to get too worked up about. Uh, this is a little side I put together. This is kind of the same graphic. This one um, showing you what I was just talking about. But here's your peak months. It kind of shows you the areas, uh, you know, June, July. Nothing's really in the Atlantic yet until maybe later in August, September. So we really don't look at the Atlantic then. Um, you know, homegrown action, June, July. 
you know, we get a little peak in June, it seems like, from these fronts, and then we get a little uh, slowdown. Fronts stop coming down. We, we stop, start losing um, the fronts, and we're kind of waiting on a tropical wave. So July sometimes goes to a little lull. June might get a little pop, July gets a little lull, and then boom, August, we start getting these tropical waves. Then October comes around, everything starts to brew down the Caribbean. Um, that's places to watch, and uh, these usually get pulled northward because of approaching frontal lines. Uh, living in Florida, you know, uh, the southeast, we got definitely got to worry about October systems uh, and then uh, November. So I got these links on the site. This is another one just kind of shows you the progression. You know, here's the first part of June, mainly homegrown. And you really don't see the activity out here in the Atlantic um, get going until August. And then September really gets going. And uh, as we get closer to October, you can see that activity winds down and it all starts to brew down here in the south. So. So there you have it, a uh, little synopsis. Uh, I debuted my hurricane shirt today. You can see it all over, all over the place on our store. Um, got all the names on there. The theme this year is it only takes one, and uh, that's been the story the last few years, right? Everybody gets wrapped up in the amount of numbers of a storm, when in reality, it's only one storm. You know, Andrew was uh, late in the season in August. It was the first storm of the year. Um, you know, a couple years ago, we had Hurricane Ida, and that was the third most active season, and really the only system people remember was Hurricane Ida. So. Don't get wrapped up in the numbers. Don't get wrapped in the lull. Last year, we were slow through, through July and August. There wasn't a named system almost through the whole month of August. Never really ever happens. And then, boom, we got Ian and Nicole there at the end. So um, it's a long season. You know, uh, there's going to be highs and lows, a lot of hype. Just, you know, stay tuned here, and we'll get you through it. That's, you know, appreciate it. I'm not an official meteorologist. I point that out a lot. But we do go over everything, all the possibilities. We're a good little happy weather family and uh we're glad to be expanding more to, to all the social media platforms so tell your friends tell your families like share comment and uh we will uh see you this season right here on mike's Twitter page right cheers